my humble respect to Guru Mahan, Guru Piran Sivasankaran, Guru Piran Nyo, fellow Nyanis. Um, today I'm going to cover uh, chapter 30 of Mahan's um, I Got Book. And today he's going to talk about man or a more um, scientific perspective of Homo sapiens. We human beings are called Homo sapiens. And uh, here Swami talks about uh, how what separates human beings from other animals on this planet. So I'm going to talk about who are we as a species. Of course, we know that uh, we have a body and uh, we have a mind, we have a spirit. Uh, Swami speaks about the small eye and the big eye. The question then is that we also in this uh, various satsangs, we talk about the universe and our earth and our planetary systems and also all the creations of the creator. So the question in this chapter is that why are we the way we are? And why are animals the way they are? Why are insects the way it is? And why are you know all the other uh, biological beings that are the way they are. So if you really want to understand uh, life and our own life, we really need to explore uh, who we are as a species. And in this chapter, Swamiji spends some time on describing who we are as a species. So I want to take you through this um, and so that we know uh, why we are here, how we are here, and where are we going to go? So, you know, all this notion of who we are, what we are, all those things, um, as we see in the spiritual compass, um, you know, one can understand life, creation, all the creators through the pursuit of uh, religious teachings or the pursuit of a scientific through the self-realization so one you have is religious teachings. The other one is a spiritual self-reflection, self-realization to understand the creator, the creating process, and the creation. But the spiritual compass also talks about we need to have logical, systematic way of understanding everything in this universe, including the creator. So we use rational reasoning, you know, logical reasoning, scientific reasoning, right? So uh, in this context, you know, there are many belief systems. Uh, belief systems means once you believe in something, then the thing is that there is no more that you can do. There's no more exploration, intellectual pursuit, you know, and there is no more that expansion, you know, one, um, you know, can take because you believe that is it. You see, and you know, why you believe that requires further analysis. But most people say, I believe this is it. So this whole issue of human evolution, who we are, there are many debates in the in the in the in the literature, debates among religious scholars, spiritual scholars, among scientists, and so on. But the best evidence that we have to date is the evidence of the through our DNA of tracing back our own roots, you know, and uh, we see that scientists today can say that, you know, with some pretty good uh, reasoning, uh, genetic uh, research, that there have been several evolution. We all come from, uh, you know, the different uh, simple biological beings from single cells right up to more complex uh, cellular, uh, you know, uh, beings. And in that process of evolutionary tree, uh, you know, uh, everything originated from, you know, the oceans through because of chemical reactions, simple chemicals became more complex and we see life began. And slowly you see that, you know, uh, we have the simple life the planktons, and then eventually it moved on to, you know, um, you know, amphibians, and 
you know, and mammals like us. So I just want to focus here on the evolution of human beings. And I want to talk about why we are there as human beings, what drives us, you know, and scientists say that the early humans, you know, um, start about 12.5 million years to 11 million years, you know, and then over time, they evolve, they change, and I'll tell you why those changes have taken place and what changes we will continue to see, right? Because we need to understand the history. If we know the history of who we are, then we will know where we are going to go. So we see that, you know, although the single cells and all goes predates, but where our, you know, the tree branched off is basically from this 12.5 million years, the seven stages, you know, and eventually, we became, you know, as some say that we originated from the apes, you know, and then something called the Homo habilis, you know, tell us about close to, you know, uh, 1.4 to 2.4 to 1.4 million uh, million years, and then eventually we we what they call the Homo sapiens or Neanderthal, another form of you know, human beings. And finally, the final stage is actually Homo sapiens, the thinking man. So the species we are today is classified as Homo sapiens, the thinking man. And that is around 550,000 to 750,000 years. So we are not that far off. We don't even meet the million mark, right? And some of the oldest Homo sapiens uh, can be found in places like Morocco and Africa and so on, it's about 315 years. So we see that, you know, the changes has taken place. And uh, scientists say that we started off with, you know, uh, on four legs and several things in nature transformed us. And what are the things that contributed to our transformation? There are 10 factors that essentially helped us transform. And this transformation is so important because we see that these, when we understand these factors, we see that what are the things that are changing our DNA, you know, our mindset and so on. So in this, you know, evolutionary stage, we see that how did it, how did we move from four-legged to two-legged? That means starting to stand up and walk. And science tells us that, you know, we were on the trees, you know, picking food and so on. And when food became very scarce, we had to come down to the ground. And and uh, we started reaching out. And that made a change in our brain that helped us to start standing and walking. Right, So there was a major switch in our uh, brain. And this is because of the environmental conditions, the circumstances that the species had to survive. And there was a switch to be able to access food. So there was a switch from four-legged to becoming two-legged. So we call it this bipedalism. That means pedal means walking. And then we saw that, you know, the search for food, the circumstances, the environmental condition had to make us more to survive, had to help us. And this is where we see nature and nurture come into play. And you see that, you know, our brain size started increasing, right? And uh, the brain size started increasing because now we needed more thinking capacity that needs a lot more energy. You know, that requires a lot more neurons and we started seeing that every day, you know, uh, we had to go and find food, places very difficult to find food. So the brain had to expand to be able to think more strategically. Then we started, as our brain started expanding, we came into contact with other creatures that were far bigger than us. Right, So we had to survive, and to survive, nature helped our brain expand. So because of the expansion, we developed tools 
that can help us, protect us, defend us, and also help us to find food. So this is the so the first factor is bipedal bipedalism that helps switch our things on our brain. Brain started expanding. As we started expanding, we became more creative to develop tools to bring down big, big animals, you know, to survive. That's the the the, the you know important aspects. Then we saw that you know over time uh, we were fighting with each other and killing one another, and we see tribes started forming. And tribes needed a, a way to communicate among themselves. So they started drawing. So communication made the switch for the, our, our ancestors. And then we formed language. So language also, there was a switch in our brain to be able to communicate. Once we know how to communicate, then we started thinking, okay, how do we, instead of all of us competing, how do we strategize? We started cooperating, started hunting together, starting to create our own ecosystems. So living together in a more cooperative way, gain further help switch our brains. Then we learned to see that there are cold weather. Some of our ancestors were migrating to cold temperature because of competition for food and so on. And to keep to survive, they needed to discover a new source of energy. And this is where they started thinking, looking at lightnings, looking at all those things, and we were able to discover fire, learn to capture fire and manage fire. So again, there was a major switch. Then over time, this evolution continued and as they were working in families and, and tribes, you see that they started looking after the children, looking after the family, and you see that the long childhood development started taking place. Like other animals, they give birth and you see you know, predators come and eat the children and so on. So here we started strategizing. We had tools to protect our family. We had fire. So we started seeing a switch again in our brain. We also started developing new things like fire and others helped us to overcome cold, bringing down big animals. We were able to use the fur. So we became more agile and adaptable to the environment. Interestingly, as the evolution progressed, we started developing logical reasoning. We started developing new languages. We started developing mathematics. We started developing many, many uh, knowledge that helped us to evolve over time. And that brings us to the discovery of mathematics, science, and all those things that we use for our own development. So you see that we human species, uh, you know, many, there are many species, but we, want, we are one of the very few species that evolved and adapted to the environment eventually starting to control the environment. So we human beings have a special place. Not that the other animals are not smart, but we have the ability to, you know, um, use fire, strategize, live in communes, live, you know, manage the ecosystem. So nature has given us some strategic advantage, including acquisition of knowledge, the language. And so when we had language, this, this is a very important part. The moment we develop language, we can then start communicating among ourselves. We can also start communicating across generations. We can leave notes, we can leave books, we can leave inscriptions, we can leave uh, pictures and charts that our future generation can use it and develop. No other animals have this power, the power of communication and language. And that's what gave us the strategic advantage to be able to pass on knowledge over the, you know, the many, many millions of, you know, thousands of years. So the jnana, the, the knowledge is really crucial that gave us that strategic advantage. So we see that as we started evolving, our brain size started changing. And you see that, you know, here I show that 
a rat has been remaining a rat for a long time. There's no evolution in, in the brain. The same thing with the cat. The chimpanzees one looks very similar to ours. You know, they say it's about 98 to 99 percent. The DNA is, is very, very similar. Uh, and you see that our, our human brains is much more bigger. The dolphin's brain looks something like this. But what is really interesting about our human brain is essentially the human brain has many folds in there uh, compared to you know, some of the other animals. It's not only bigger, but it has got many folds in our brain. And every fold gives us a new uh, strategic advantage of generating thoughts, ideas, and also uh, you know, becoming more and more creative. Sometimes if that fold is not there, uh, the mental development cannot be uh, achieved. So we see in children or people with autism or with other disorder, you see that their brain, uh, pat their, their brain structure is slightly different and the brain wave is very different. So we see that there are differences between the human brains and the animal brains. So here we see that you know uh, the the size and the structures are very different. By the way, you will notice that uh, you know even the brain, although physically may look the same for most people, but you see that as we start using you know, our brains a lot, uh, particularly you see that as we age, our brain starts shrinking because we use less of it. But if you start using your brains a lot, do meditation, do all kinds of exercises and activity, you see that the brain uh, can still grow. It's called neurogenesis. You know, cells that are dying, it'll replicate. So the number of cells and neurons that die every day, the replacement is faster. The number of cells that die faster and the replacement is lower, you see that the brain starts shrinking. In some part of the brain, when it starts shrinking, we cannot remember, you know, we forget, we get Alzheimer's, we get all kinds of things. So, so it's very important to keep the brain uh, very active, thinking very, very carefully and so on. So several things that determines our own existence, you know, and there's a difference between us and the brain. One is the brain size. Right? So in the brain size, you see that for majority of the animals, the brain size is about you know, uh, less than the humans. You know? the, the, the brain size is about 1.2 kilograms only. Whereas if you see in the case of humans, uh, uh, you know, it's somewhere about 1 you know, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. Right? So um, the size uh, matters. Right? So Obviously, size relative to the body. The whale size is big, but the brain relative to its body is, is, is small. So again, you know, uh, the whale is, you know, about six kilos, you know, and the, the body is, is much more bigger. So the other aspect of the brain that is really important is not just the, the size, but the, the, the cerebral cortex, which is the front you know, and uh, parts of the brains that are really important, the neurons in the brains, the texture and the layering in the brain also matters. That gives you, so I'm describing the hardware called the brain, right? And all these have an impact on our cognitive ability, ability to, you know, understand, ability to reason, right? And also the neural connections, how strong the neural connections are. The more we use our brains, the more we deeper we think, the more we meditate, the more we do ICRMS, we see that our neural connectivity has an impact on our hardware. And then we see that, you know, the intellect, the ability to think deeper, you know, processing information, the ability to, to, to experience things, understand that experience, rationalize those experiences, you know. The other aspect is also the sensory perceptions. As our brain evolves, you know, our senses become more refined. We can smell things, we can hear things, we can see things, we can taste things, right? Also, as our brain evolves, our ability to navigate, to manage through, 
you know, various circumstances, you know, we become more agile and more nimble, right? So if you see, if our brain doesn't evolve, we we are less agile. And this happens for us as we age, as our brain starts shrinking, as our folds slowly start, you know, shrinking too, uh, you know, we see that we become less agile, we trip and fall and all those things. The other aspect of the hardware is this aspect of growth of the brain cells and the neural connectivity. At the end of the neurons, we have something called telometers. So if you eat healthily, if you exercise, you meditate, the telometers continue to join and be longer and be more connected. If you don't do that, it gets shorter and you see that the gaps within the synapse spans. So I believe to think and make sense becomes more difficult. The other aspect is that as we our experiences that we are getting, we are understanding the brain, the mind starts storing in the memory the back of the brain where there's a lot more, um, you know, neurons. You see that we're able to save that information. We get photography memory. We can remember things for, for a very long time. So you see that uh, smaller animals relative, the, the smaller brains relative to the body, we see that the ability to become agile, the ability to think, the ability to rationalize, the ability to react, uh, may be very different. And this is what the strategic advantage we as a human beings is that nature actually helped our brain, our hardware to evolve. In that evolution, we are able to develop more softwares of thinking, rationalizing, creativity, curiosity, all those things started emerging and the brain became more connected. And that's how the emergence of modern human beings, right? So, so what we see here is that we started evolving. As we started evolving, we started seeing parts of our brains, part of the folds started becoming more and more uh, complex and more and more layered, the textures improving, greater neural connectivity, and we started uh, experiencing more refined aspects. There are things that essentially starts, uh, you know, before it was very crude, you know, did not make sense, before our movements were more gross, we see that we become more and more agile. So we see parts of our brain starts growing. The other aspect is that as we started getting food, better food, before, you know, uh, in the early days, we had maybe food, when we catch things, we get food, otherwise we starve. But as we started coming together, you know, having farming and all those things, our nutrition improved, you know, our way of life improved. You see that the brain evolved faster, new layers started forming, and you started seeing that our frontal cortex, which is the red color, you know, started expanding a lot more neural connectivity. And that frontal cortex is very important for concentration, planning, problem solving, you know, judgments, making decisions, you know, anticipating outcomes. You know, it also is very important for conversation and speaking. So not surprising when that started developing, we as human beings started learning to communicate first with drawings and then with symbols and then with words, and then constructing sentences, all those things eventually at poetry and so on. So you see that, you know, as that part of the brain started developing, the, the intellect started really uh, expanding the sense of awareness of our ability. We know, okay, we're doing things. The re there's a reasoning for it. You know, we know how to discipline and self-manage ourselves because the ability to think and analyze is there. Uh, our motor coordination improves. You know, our personality starts changing to becoming more and more refined. Uh, you know, I'm just talking about the prefrontal cortex. I'm talking about how the hardware is now helping all the software to emerge, right? We then, you know, uh, in before we used to, you know, fight and, and kill each other for mating, but now uh, to, to pass the genes to the next generation, you see that, you know, the procreation habits change a little bit more peace and, you know, family units forming, 
you know, better environment for the, the future generation and development of the future generation. So we see that the procreation patterns change, our behavior changed, you know. Uh, we see that, you know, uh, our limitation, we know how to manage limitations and we know how to use, to become creative to overcome our limitations. We know how to organize ourselves as a species. You know, uh, sometimes that's why you see that people are in tribes because it gives them strategic advantage. We know how to, you know, get attention, be focused, you know, concentration improves. You know, mental flexibility also starts improving because we know how to, the connectivity is very good. And also uh, we see that, you know, we know how to uh, initiate things, see through it and so on. So it's all about concentration, problem solving, planning. So when we started, you know, evolving, when this part of the brain started improving, we see that all this problem solving, communication, speech improve, smell, you know, motor control improved significantly. So we became more and more refined compared to our ancestors, compared to many animals, right? So we see that happening. The second one is the parietal lobe, which is essentially the more yellow color. Again, we see that that one is, you know, improves our sense of touch and, you know, our differentiation between size, shape, and all those things. So our senses are becoming more refined. We have a very good understanding of the spatial perceptions, you know, the space around us, time, you know, our visual perceptions improved. We see that our academic skills improve, ability to learn becomes better, right? That's why this part is so important. You know, those, as the earlier one, the netrican, the third eye, and this is very important, right? So we see that, you know, if you, you know, ability to analyze academic skills, mathematical skills improve uh, in that parietal uh, cortex, right? So we see that reading, writing, all these are very important at the top. So we see that, you know, our sensory perception improves, our taste uh, improves. We also have on the, uh, you know, on the green side, we see hearing, ability to recognize, you know, uh, that's the temporal lobe. Right? So the temporal lobe is very important for us to understand language, you know, listening carefully, you know, organizing and sequencing our thoughts information, how to, in, you know, extract information, how to capture information, you know, uh, we become more and more aware of music, sound, right, so hearing improves, our sound, perception of sound improves, our memory, you know, ability to learn, and the feelings, you know, we get feelings. So we see that, you know, when the green side, the temporal lobe expands a lot more, our neural network, we start seeing this improves and we as a species started evolving, right? So the, the yellow area, which is really important, which is called the occipital lobe, that also started expanding to, you know, nutrition and all those things. We started seeing that our vision started uh, improving, right? So we see that, you know, um, our, our visual perception, our visual interpretation of things become more clearer you know, ability to read, ability to perceive and recognize and cognize things improves. So that is why this part of the brain is really important, you know, and it stores things, the memory, and so on. And obviously, you also have that, that coordination part, which is the bottom here, which is, you know, below, you know, the coordination, that is the cerebellum. Right. So you see the cerebellum is very important for coordination of voluntary movements, you know, move things more agile, balance. So if that part of the brain is not working very well, we have balance problems. You know, and also it you know, it's it's all our memories for reflex motor acts. Because the brain, whatever we do, we remember. So, you know, when 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 that part of the the brain is damaged, sometimes we don't know how to walk, don't know how to so that part evolves, you know, over time. And you see that sometimes you see a child is crawling in four legs. That's part of the ancestry of the early 
humans. But you see that because that part of the brain is growing for the child over days, months, you see that they start standing up. Right? Nobody taught it how to stand or flip. It's because, you know, genetically it's been passed on. And when that part of the brain starts developing, automatically that's what the child will start doing, starting to stand up, you know, starting to, you know, reach out, you know, and so on. So it's really fascinating. And then obviously you have the brain stem. The brain stem is right in the bottom, which is the gray color, which is, you know. So again, that is very important for balance you know it, it helps us with our balance reflexes and you know, autonomous nervous systems you know there are nervous systems that operate automatically even without the brain controlling it controls the brain you know breathing you know how heart control you know swallowing consciousness also that's why the that that gray part is so important because that's where the flow of the kundalini energy and the energy flow is very important gives you a sense of the consciousness the neural pathway there blood pressure, you know, alertness, ability to sleep, and also sweating. It gives you the body to release the energy, release heat, release, you know, uh, when you sweat, you get rid of all the toxins. So the brain is so special because if you see, you know, each part of the brain has a function, right? And each function has a particular a way that they imprint the personality, the human personality, right? So it builds, you know, the human personality, it builds the intellect, it builds the creativity, and that's what gives us the strategic advantage compared to most of the other uh, animals. But one thing that really nature favored us is that the ability to communicate, the ability to design and develop language the ability to, to uh, discover mathematics, to be able to do science and many other acquire knowledge and pass knowledge over time. And that is what uh, we see that, you know, the hardware that nature has given us, uh, that has given us that personality as a human being and that strategic advantage, uh, you know, compared to most of the, most of the species. Here it is, you know, we are homo sapiens. But when we harness the human brain, the hardware, so we've done, you know, uh, the thinking man, we're thinking, we can rationalize, we have communication, we have mathematics, we've got science. That has given us so much comfort, so much, you know, we human beings used to die at the age of 30, 40 years old, you know, because of tribal war, because of disease because of uh, animals eating us. But over time, we have, using the brain and the mind and the intellect, we were able to overcome many, many challenges, so much so that we can even live in places which is not habitable for the human body. We can live in space. And this is how powerful that simple 1.3 to 1.5 kilogram brain that is able to generate so much power that is able to understand this universe, the forces of the universe. This is what an ordinary human being is. But when they push that to further through introspection, contemplation, reflection, meditation, and service, the connectivity becomes more stronger. It just transcends to a different level. You know, the difference between a chimpanzee and a human being is only about 99%. Our DNA is about close to 90, 98 to 99%. It's about 1% to 2% difference between the chimpanzee and us, at least, you know, genetically. But in spite of the 1% to 2%, the chimpanzee can only open the bananas do simple rudimentary things, <clears throat> equivalent to our two-year-old child. <clears throat> so the chimpanzees, the advanced chimpanzees' uh, uh, development phase is equivalent to our two-year-old child. A two percent, the one to two percent, has made us much more sophisticated 
than a chimpanzee. So the one to two percent of the change in our DNA has enabled us to put rockets, satellites, discover mathematics, discover the universe, discover the forces of the universe. But the chimpanzees only know how to open a banana and you know do simple rudimentary, just one to two percent difference. But the Difference in, in, in personality, difference in intellectual is phenomenal. So can you imagine if those people who can, this is ordinary people, if you can increase your mental power by 1% to 2% compared to an ordinary person who can do really complex things, it will be equivalent to the 1% to 2% that the ordinary person is like a two-year-old child, like the chimpanzee, but you'd be way, way ahead. So can you imagine if there's a species that is just one to two percent different from us? It'll probably be at a very high level, and so more sophisticated. So the sophistication of the mind gives us the strategic advantage to understand, become aware, self-realize, self-actualize, compared to an ordinary person. So this is the power of the human mind. That is why in all the scriptures, including Mahan, talks about how do we harness the power of the hardware that builds that software that is continuously expanding. And that's why we as human beings have the strategic advantage compared to most of the other species. And that is why we see that the Mahans, the Albert Einsteins and others, they have the additional one to two percent that gives them the strategic advantage to discover many things compared to most ordinary person. Sandosham.